Hey guys, David Franklin here with uh, Carnival Uncut and the famous Doug Bilal. Doug, listen, oh wait, let me, let me introduce you. This is Jack's dad. <laughs> so, guys, uh, Doug is uh, head of Bartow Collaborative, which is the point for all of our nonprofits. It's just a great thing. Doug, I go to the Bartow Collaborative once a month when we meet. Uh, but Doug's a great partner in strategizing and helping just identify issues in the community and all that kind of stuff. And he and I have been working on all this budget tail stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been working on that, but you know, Doug, this isn't new for us because we've been working on stuff like this for a long time, hadn't we? That's right. Well, part of what we do with the collaborative is, is try to identify the, the issues in our community and then look at, at strategies that we can use to connect others in our community to, to all pull in the same direction on some of these issues. And housing is one of the, is one of the key things that we look for. And you and I have been working on stuff like this. Uh, guys, a couple of years ago, we actually did a community profile. And we tried to look and say, where's the, where, where's the pain, where's the darkness in Bartow County? And so, Doug, you and I, have, we, we talked about foster care. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have enough foster care families. We've done stuff talking about, uh, we've got a bunch of kids. Last year, we had 76 kids whose mom or dad were in incarceration state or federal incarceration and we made sure they got Christmas presents. You, you've been involved in a whole bunch of stuff. We, we work together real well. Uh, Read to Grow actually came out of. Oh, yeah. It's made it, it's gotten famous kind of all of a sudden. It came out of that and uh, because of that Doug, matter of fact, we actually asked, got asked to go up to Washington DC to the first ever Faith and Opportunity Summit. That's right. And Bartow County was one of 10 communities that got to go present. And Doug and I and Janet Queen and Bruce Thompson went up there and presented and uh, we actually, Bartow County and Marshall, Texas, stole the show. That's right. <laughs> and matter of fact, that caused them, Washington, D.C. came down here, we toured around. We actually took them to the budget tell. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. That's but, right. But we've actually uh, gotten a grant uh, through a nonprofit called Mission Bartow. We've gotten a grant that uh, we've actually been meeting in a pretty major way, uh, community leaders and stuff like that. And Doug's actually head of, tell them, Doug, what's it called? <laughs> It's our uh, workforce housing um, group within the uh, the community uh, prosperity council, or the this faith based um, collaboration with the community and with community leaders to try to figure out some uh, some solutions for workforce housing. Because that that's an issue. Transportation. I've been working a lot with quality of life, and we'll be doing some stuff about that next year. So, Doug, when when we come back, because that kind. You know, it takes a lot to introduce you, okay? <laughs> so, but uh, when we come back, I'm going to ask Doug this question, and we're going to talk about this. And that is very specifically, where are we now in the budget crisis? Because I think that's what everybody wants to know. But then I've got a bunch of other questions and stuff we'll talk about. So, guys, we'll be right back, and we will give you an update that um, is as current as you can have on where are we in the budget crisis. So thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Bria at the Herb Shop of Cartersville. I wanted to talk to you all about CBD. I know you've probably heard about it. There's so many people that are benefiting. A lot of my customers come in and it helps them with arthritis, pain, chronic migraines, even sleep disorders, anxiety, daily stress. And it comes in cream form, capsule form, and water-soluble liquid. We only carry two lines because we want to use the highest quality out there for you. So come in, try it, give me your feedback, get a brochure, and educate yourself about quality CBD hemp oil. SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you find a huge selection of high-end mattresses without paying high-end prices? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you save 50 to 80% off retail every day? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. We offer the lowest prices on the best name brand mattresses. SOS Mattress and Clearance Center on Highway 41 in Cartersville, one block south of Home Depot. Hey Cartersville, it's finally feeling like fall here in North Georgia. The temperature is falling and we have hot deals here at Treasure Chest Outlet. Rustic is hot right now. We have dining tables, we have sofa tables, console tables, you name it in Rustic, we've got it. Also, football's in full swing. 
hey, the family's going to be coming by for that Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to need somewhere for them to sit. We have a large selection of sofas. We just got a big load in. Hey, we sell you a sofa love for what most people just sell you a sofa for. We're located at 927 North Tennessee Street. Come on by and see us. You just never know what you're going to find here at Treasure Chest Outlet. Hey guys, David Franklin with Cardsville Uncut, back with Doug Bilal. Doug, you're head of Bartow Collaborative, and uh, we do a lot of stuff together in the community. You work with all these nonprofits. I kind of is point person a lot of times for the faith community because a lot That's of right. pastors can't go to every meeting. So because I'm not pastoring, I get I get to do that. But uh, all right, let's talk about this budgetel crisis. Yes. Right now, because you and I were in meetings <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, <That's laughs> right. this morning. So so bring us up to speed on kind of what's going on right now. So one of the things that that I think gives us a little bit of a, a unique perspective as far as from the collaborative level, and especially I think my my role is um, we kind of, I look at things like an air traffic controller. So I'm trying to look at all the traffic um, that's going on and figure out ways that we can coordinate and, and really the best ways to problem solve. That My job is, is to help to build a strategy um, and then to introduce the right partners into that strategy who can who can really make the work more efficient and effective. And so as we've looked at Budgetel, and I think specifically today, as, as last week we were able to get several families, you know, rehoused, so to speak. Nobody, nobody was on the street. That's right. They did not choose to be. That's right. I, which is a testimony to our community, and that's nonprofits, faith, individuals, all kinds of, there's all kinds of ministries and nonprofits. Lots of people have stepped up. It's incredible the response that we've had in, in really hours yeah. from our community that, um, that people just reached out and said, you know, we don't want families in our community that are, that are really the most vulnerable families in our community um, to be on the streets. And, um, and really that was the only other option. So those families that had some other options, maybe they had family close by, or maybe they had something that, that they were able to work out. Some, um, have, some have gone. Some have gone, some, that's right. Some, some have gone there. Not everybody chose to, to you know, the route of, of, you know, working with our agencies that were helping folks yeah. out. And that's great. And, and uh, Doug, one of the sad stories is a couple of folks that we housed didn't want to play by the rules, and so they wouldn't let them stay. But, okay, guys, now this is the great... It's not a great story. It's a sad story. But Doug, you got to tell them about one guy that had unusual housing. Okay. <laughs> so, I, one of the uh, I'm not sure whether to call it fortunate or unfortunate. But <laughs> last week, when the when the eviction happened, I mean, the, the media showed up. Um, not sure who called the media, but the media were there, and um, and they 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 picked a person to do an interview, and and this this guy, you know, basically was interviewing one of our our. Our partners, our community nonprofit partners, was watching the news that day and noticed this guy and said, "Hang on, just a second. Uh, he looks familiar." And it turned out that he had warrants for um, pedophilia and and child endangerment, and he was a he was a bad guy. Up and there with eighty plus kids. Up there living at the Budgetel with full access, and um, and so we. Um, He's that, got permanent housing. Now, that partner he? called the police, That's and they picked him up that afternoon, and he is now. Very stably housed um, with with meals every day. With three meals every day at the uh, at and that, the jail. And that's the sad. But but you know, Doug, that that represents some of because because we've been working up at Budgetel. You and I. That's right. I mean, here in my office, we had a meeting and all that kind of stuff. And there's been a lot of folks. I mean, we actually saw people that were being housed in permanent solutions even this year before Budgetel got shut down. But some of the people have found housing through other places. Some. Uh, we've housed some have struggled I mean there's just so there's been teams of people and I interviewed Kelly Whitmire the other day she she and some other people have been over there assessing every family I think that's right yeah and it's been incredible that the work with the, the work of our school system and 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 other partners in in with not only with the health department but, but other just community faith-based partners um, reaching working out and, together. and working together and, and looking to see what how we can help families and um, and it's tough I mean these these families are for the most part they're living in hotel motels because that's their only option right now so I know I know one of the kids that's all they've ever known mm -hmm. that's all they've ever known and some some people require way more help than others 
There was a group that we identified that we'd been working with that were, we, we knew that we were going to be able to get them into permanent stability. And like, that was 10 plus families. I mean, I, yeah. you know, people were working really hard. There's some people that uh, maybe they're not quite as far down the road. There, there's other people, the, the ones that are easiest to help, the ones that have jobs That's right. and transportation. That's right. But some have jobs and no transportation. You know, we'd done a job fair up there, and some people had gotten jobs right across the road. That's right. But now they don't have transportation to get there. So this is a complicated issue, isn't it? It really is. It's, it's, it's um, you know, as we looked at comments and things like that, as I've, if, if, I've, I've tried to stay off the comment section of social media, but, but as we've looked at those comments, you know, some, of, some people just don't. I, I think there's a lack of understanding that, you know, why don't you just get a job or why would you choose to live there? That's not even affordable. And it's not. I mean, it's not. It's, these folks were paying, you know, upwards of $1,000 a month just, it, just to stay in a one bedroom, you know, a hotel room. Doug, you and I have talked about it. It's more costly to be poor than it is. I mean, it just costs. That's right. Me. I think one of the uh, stories that touched my heart was a uh, lady with some kids and she had transportation, had a job, all that kind of stuff and got hit, wasn't her fault, was in a car wreck. And all of a sudden, she doesn't have transportation. She ends up in the budget hotel. She was working, and now this has set her back. So this is, right. this is really complicated. I know one thing that's really been amazing to me is all of our shelters are full, because we, we've been working hard trying to find housing. That's right. I'm talking about, there've been a lot and, of phone calls. And not just this week, like we've been working hard to find housing for months and on years. Um, and now we have this crisis, so we're trying to call hotels, we're trying to call you know, our shelters, everybody, right. and uh, we, we can't find hotels that have space. So, so when we come back, I'm gonna ask you this question, okay? Do we have a housing crisis in Bartow County? <laughs> because, y'all, you can't believe how hard people have been working. And so, Doug, get ready, because right. the question of the next section is, do we have a housing crisis? We'll be right back. This is Kelly Jones with Kennesaw Transportation, and I have a job for you. We are always looking for good over-the-road drivers. We have teams. We have solos. Uh, we have a two-day orientation that pays you $400, a $2,500 sign-on bonus, and we have a $10,000 seniority bonus for every five years. If you're looking for a new career, we can help you. If you're looking to change jobs, we can help you. Give me a call. Can't wait to hear from you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Joshua Goodman with Elite Stone Supply. We sell everything from hardscaping, landscaping, stone, Husqvarna equipment, and Premier Portable buildings. We can make them from 6x10 all the way up to 16x40. We make garden sheds, garages, cabins, barns, anything you can think of, we can make it happen. Do you need to store Christmas stuff? Do you need to store a lawnmower? We can take care of that. Do you need to get away? Do you need to uh, a pool house by your pool. We can make it happen. Come check us out at Elite Stone Supply. Hey, this is Joe Wilson, co-owner of Parnick Jennings Funeral Home, Cartersville's locally owned funeral home, serving all of Bartow County since 1977. The biggest difference uh, of, of our funeral home here in Bartow County, Cartersville, is that we are a locally owned funeral home. Uh, we make all our decisions right here in the funeral home. When people walk in the door, they're going to meet the owner and know that we're making decisions on what's best for the families that have placed their trust and confidence in us and the needs of our community. One thing we always say to families that place their trust in us is ask a family we have served. We want people to know that when they come here for probably one of the most difficult experiences in their life, that, that they can feel comfortable with us. On behalf of myself and all the staff here at Parnick Jennings Funeral Home, we want you to know it would be our honor to serve your family during your time of need. Please call us at 770-382-0034. Glenda Mitchell with Glenda Mitchell Law Firm. If you've been involved in an accident, give me a call. Let me help you. I give every client my personal cell phone number so you can call or text me anytime. Glenda Mitchell Law Firm. We come to you. Hey, David Franklin here. And uh, with Doug Bilal and Doug's 
head person for our virtual collaborative, but Doug, we've got this thing, DC came down, help us launch it, uh, called a Prosperity Council, yeah. where we're tr really trying to make Bartow County the best and most blessed community around. And that's government, business, faith, nonprofits, education, working together. And we've seen some real great collaboration. Absolutely. I mean, I'm telling you, the relationships between our education and everybody has been, business has been great, and uh, nonprofits. And, but we do that all the time. That's right. But on this, on this uh, Prosperity Council with Mission Bartow, we, we have uh, teams. <laughs> and you're actually in charge of workforce housing. So yeah. here's the question, okay? Because <laughs> you gave a report just the other day. That's right. Last month. Uh, do we have a housing crisis in Bartow County? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely we do. And, and, and I think the, the crisis is, is very complex to try to describe. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not just... And I, I, I hate the term affordable housing because it's so ambiguous. Um, and for a lot of people, it, the, when, when we use the term affordable housing, what immediately comes to mind is run down, government run, section eight type, you know, slums that, right. that people live in squalor and they're, you know, and, and, and that's not what we're talking about. We don't want more of that kind of housing in um, in Bartow County, what we need is workforce housing, and so we've made the very simple s switch in language just to say, hey, if we talk about workforce housing, we find that a lot more people come to the table because we do need workforce housing in in the community. We need homes from, you know, seven eight hundred dollars a month all the way up, um, you know, all the way up the ladder into million dollar homes. Yeah. I mean, we've got uh, guys. I'm gonna tell you, this has been a huge educational learning curve for me. Because, Doug, I think the thing that's most sobering to me is, is so many of the people, because Atlanta's moving up here and the economy and taxes going up and all kinds of things, okay? Right. Like you said, it was a complex issue. If you work at a lot of our good places like Toyo Tire, Shaw, places like that, well, you may not be able to afford anything that's been built in the last stretch. And so we've been trying to look at solutions and stuff like that, and we don't... You know, Doug, we want to find a we live in a place where we work and live and play and pray in the same place. That's right. That's and, right. And we've got, we really are struggling in this area with building houses. And a lot of the people at the Budge Tail, they actually work and they serve us in place. But, but where do they live? Because where can you find something for? That's right. And a lot of them are working two and three jobs. That's so right. we're not talking about... We're not talking about the, the stereotype of a person who is just living off of the government and they don't, you know, do those people exist? Sure. I mean, there's, there's stereotypes, I think, for a reason. But by and large, the people that we've found at the Budgetel, I, they're people who are struggling to make it. They're, they're, they're living in crisis. And uh, I think that's important to remember. And I, from an economic or, you know, from that 65,000 foot view, you think about what's happened to the economy. Um, and the, the economy has been great. And uh, the unemployment rate is down. And, and all of a sudden we've got builders coming into the community and they're building housing. But because of what happened in 2008, there's so much more overhead. So builders that, that are coming in that are major players, Back when the economy crashed in, in 08, 09, they sold all their equipment sold just so that they could stay afloat. And now that they're back in, they're having to buy all that new equipment. And we're, we've talked to builders and developers that say we can't build anything less than $250,000 or we're losing money. Guys, the, the, the price per square foot on a house has gone up dramatically. That's right. If you don't think housing is not an issue, let me give you one, Okay. <laughs> Because I work with all these churches and stuff like that, we've got ministers that move in. I've got ministers that moved here. They can't find housing. They can't find anything to rent. I mean, they're putting it out to their church. Hey, we got to pray because our pastor, our new pastor, has got kids and he can't find any place to live. So, I mean, that's a that's a pretty major thing. That's right. And and what happens is there's no mobility in the market. So a person like me that moved in right before the uh, the. the the big decline, you know, automatically I was stuck in my house for, for a decade and now I could sell for more than I bought it for, 
but I can't move into any place that I can afford. And so you've got people like me in the community that are sitting in our houses because there's not, there's not any middle ground. So I'm taking somebody's spot that could move in to mine and leave some of the, the, the less expensive or what we could say more workforce level housing, there's no mobility. And because of that, and because builders aren't able to make a profit by building some of these, you know, we're, we're stuck. So we're it's, stuck. it's not just a, well, just go, you could get in a house for $1,000 a month. You sure could if you could find one. You could find one. Guys, I'm telling you, this, this is a, Doug, this is a whole other conversation. Maybe we can twist David Paul's arm and say, we'll come back and, but, but uh, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to go jump back to the budget tail because it's a complex issue, but we want to know how can we help and then moving forward, what's, it, what's this going to look like? Because we've been working on this, so we'll be right back. located on Henderson Drive in Westing Commons Shopping Center. Unlike most medical clinics, we do labs right here in the office, including x-rays, saving you the hassle of scheduling yet another appointment across town. Here at Spencer Family Medicine, we accept almost our insurance plan. And we can almost always fit you in for same-day appointment. We serve patients young to old. From urgent care issues like broken bones to long-term issues like weight management and hormone therapy. Not only that, but Dr. Spencer and staff are trained in aesthetic work. So come to see us at Spencer Family Medicine. We would love for you to be a part of our family. I'm Dr. Spencer, and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> okay, girls. Ready? Okay. Ready, go. Hello, Cartersville. If you had not been by lately, come on by and check us out. We've totally revamped the store. We've added a lot more large capacity washers for your big loads. We have 40 pounders, 60 pounders, and 80 pounders for those huge loads. If you've got large bedding, come on by and see us. We've got the machine you need from a single person all the way up to a multi-family. If you're tired of doing laundry yourself, we offer a wash, dry, and fold service where you can drop it off. A few hours later, come back, it's ready to wear. We're located at 406 North Tennessee Street. It's All American Coin Laundry. Come by and see us for all your laundry needs. Franklin here talking with Doug Bilal about this current crisis budgetel and Doug th this I have a sense this won't be the last one that we have that's right and uh, but it's it's just reflective of a deeper issue but we want to talk about the budgetel thing uh, can people still help absolutely um, now the helping I think becomes complex because like we've talked about the problems aren't just I need housing the problems go much deeper than that. So as, as people get involved, I think there's a, a few ways. Number one, if you want to be part of the discussion, we need your help. If you know about available housing or rental housing. Well, that's, that's huge right there. We've had some people call and say, listen, I know where a house is coming open in a week. And it's like, okay, we can house these people and get them into here. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to place these people in long-term to where there's stability. That's right. That's right. And that's the goal for all these families yeah. is to find stable housing because nobody should have to live in a hotel. That's right. Um, so if you've got if you've got rental property, um, we've got ways to connect you to other nonprofits that actually will will bring stability and work alongside of a family to where you're not directly renting to that family per se, but you're renting to this nonprofit organization that is then going to help come alongside that family. And, and bring them into stability. And it provides some stability for the owner. Yeah, and, and guys, I wanna make sure that you, uh, cause Doug, what can they do now? There's a lot of different ways they can give. You can give through a local church, you can give to the Good Neighbor Homeless Shelter. We, we, we've got lots of different ways. A lot of, lot of nonprofits have been doing so much and a lot of churches have been doing this stuff. But 
the, you know, you and I, we were talking about, we were already working on this. I mean, could it be that we were able to take a family that's really, really serious about stability, move them into a house and have got a nonprofit that actually specializes in this, maybe near a church. And my commitment is to try to get churches to say, hey, let's adopt this family and walk with them. And, and, and we've got to do financial training. We've got to do how to cook meals. If you've never lived in a house, you got to know how to cut the grass. I That's mean, right. it, it's a it's a wraparound service, isn't That's it? That's right. It is. It's wraparound, and it's and it's it's the kind of thing that people that you know we need help. If if I got in a crisis, uh, thankfully I've I've got a network That's right. of people that can help me. But some you people call me, Doug. They don't. That's you right. Can, you can help. I'll I know help. if I know if my house burns down that I can come over to That's the Franklin right. house. That's right. Uh, your kids like it at my house. That's better right. Than it at your house. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Doug, one of the things that uh, I, I think is just huge, this idea of wraparound services. And guys, we actually started talking about a Four Corners ministry uh, earlier this year where there, there's a story in the Bible of a paraplytic and he was on a mat. It took four friends to pick him up, take him to Jesus, but Jesus was inside this house and couldn't get through the front door because it was too crowded. So those guys took that guy up on the roof, dug a hole through the roof and lowered the guy down. But it took four of them. And one thing we've learned is, man, if somebody tries to help somebody and be the only person. So I think we've got a great plan moving forward thinking, okay, it's going to take a, a church or it's going to take a small group. It's, it's people to navigate and then resources from all the different places. And, that's right. and I think that's where us working together like we do, mm -hmm. the more we do this as a community, the better off we are. Yeah, and I, I think the only caution I would offer to that is that um, there is a right way to help and a harmful way to help. So there's a great book that's that's out called uh, Helping Without Hurting. Um, wait, wait, let me just stop and say this, okay? Guys, please, please make sure you catch that. You can actually hurt a person by helping them certain ways. And if you, want to, if you really want to delve into this, read up on this, because I'm telling you, Doug, that book helped me and you know you gave it to me and it's like you know what this that's that is a and what we want to do is we don't want to hinder people that's right we, we want to walk with them and and really help them take those steps to where you know that that, that builds something in here when you can you can you know, there's a difference between doing it for them and them helping them do it. It's just huge. That's right. You take the, the condescension out of it. So it's not, yeah. let me save you. It's, hey, you're broken. I'm broken. We're probably broken in different ways. Let's walk together and help each other. So I, I think that really becomes helpful with um, with that. I think another way that that, that we could use help is, is if there's influence, uh, I know that as we've tried to gather different partners to the to the table, as we've talked about this issue for years and years and years, one of the missing pieces, one of the gaps that we're having is with our housing authority. Um, our housing authority has all kinds of, of powers that, ha that the government kind of bestows upon them to do great things for, for families in crisis. And we've invited and invited and invited, and, and they're ju they just haven't ever been at the table. And so if people have influence with our housing authority, maybe you serve on the board at the housing authority, we've got to have your help. We really need you at the table. It takes all of us. That's right. And, you know, Doug, that's where this thing, and, and for a long time, a, a lot of times one piece was missing, maybe education, maybe faith. And what I try to do is make sure the faith community is at the table. I mean, that's so anyway, but listen, guys, uh, please know, thank you for all that you've been doing. A bunch of y'all have been doing so much. I'm telling you, I wish I could just take one show and read off everybody that helped because there's so many people that have been, that have been great. Doug, thank you for what you do. And uh, thank you for taking a little time. This is a little different than what normally, you know, do a lot of fun, rah-rah kind of things. But this is kind of some, this is, this is getting down into the deep stuff that ultimately, because if you don't have housing, right, that kid is going to go to school. If you don't have good, stable housing, I just learned that a kid that doesn't get a good night's sleep retains 50% less than kids. And so we want to increase reading scores. We want to have a blessed community. you got to, you got to do it all. It's got to be a 360, not just a one thing. That's so, right. So listen, guys, we'll come back, and I'm going to twist David Paul's arm, and we're going to keep having some discussions like this. So... Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully this was helpful. And, you know, don't just sit on your couch. Do something.
That's right. Because I'm telling you, it takes all of us to have a blessed community. That's right. Listen, thank you for what you're doing.